here are some top tips that I hope will be helpful for you as a parent in having a better time with your child and uh, achieving the goals that you have set for yourselves. Now, tip number one is about quality time. I know you've heard it before, but it really is important. What do I mean by quality time? I mean time with your child. Now, here, here's the thing. It has to be regular reliable, your child knows it's going to happen. It's not as if you, sorry, randomly, <laughs> randomly just give them quality time when you feel like it. No, 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 that won't work. It needs to be something that they can look forward to that they know happens every week. Let me give you an example. When I was a mother of teenage children, uh, I am still their mother, but they growed up. <laughs> um, we used to have always regular meal times, and I'll get on to that, but on a Thursday night, about mealtime, there was a favourite show that we all liked. And so we used to abandon the usual rules, go and sit in front of the TV with our plate of supper on our laps and watch and really enjoy. I recently visited my nephew. He remembers, he's 30 something now. And he said, remember on Thursday nights when we used to? So it really, really does make a difference in terms of the quality of your relationship. And it is like gold. It really is like money in the bank. It doesn't need to cost anything. Watching that show every Thursday night cost me nothing. And they had to have dinner properly every other night of the week, so it made it special. It doesn't have to cost money. The thing is, it's regular, it's with you, and it's something you also enjoy. Don't think about giving your child quality time if you're going to hate it. It has to be something that you both enjoy, and sometimes that's a challenge. Maybe you like gardening. Maybe on a weekend you could have some quality time when you create a little garden with them. Maybe you like cooking, or maybe dads, they love to take this under the football. That's a very good example of regular, predictable quality time that you both share. And as I said, it doesn't have to cost anything. Now, reading your child a bedtime story is quality time. It's a few minutes, probably every day or weekdays or whenever, but frequently recurring, reliable, something you both enjoy. Pick stories you like. If you don't like saying the yellow duck went quack, quack, quack 10 times, find another story. And there's loads of you know apps and things that you can have these days for that. So just prioritise it. I know that parents are very busy these days and sometimes it's hard to give your child time, but it's one of the most precious things you can give your child and hey, it's not going to be there in 10 years' time. Everything will have changed. Now is the time to give some time. My next tip, number two, is eat a meal together. That's really an extension of quality time, but it's a very specific thing. These days, some families don't even own a table. Uh, they may live in a small flat and so on and don't prioritise having a meal around a table. Well, you don't have to own a table, although it does help, because these days people often don't eat together in that life is busy, chaotic, pressured, and mealtimes can be just on the hoof, so to speak. But if you can manage to have a, a meal together, hopefully every day, but sometimes particularly with mums and dads schedules being all over the place, maybe not every day, if you can, good, but at least once a week, have a family meal together, and when you do, make it fun. Don't be all about your manners and this and that, although it is a good opportunity to socialise your children into um, you know, how to behave around a, an eating situation, which is no bad thing. But that's not really what it's about in this tip. It's again about quality time. So uh, my daughter went to boarding school for a while and she said the thing that she missed was the, what she described as intellectual discussions around the table. I didn't think we did that, but we certainly do, you know, put the world to rights, tell some jokes, talk about grievances like that teacher's picking on me or whatever, and you'll be surprised how much your child will then talk to you because a lot of parents say, my child never talks to me, and they come home to school, I say, how was your day? And they say, fine. Whereas if you have this family meal where you share, food is very important, nice food, easy conversation, make it relaxed, it will pay such dividends at many, many levels. So eat together as often as you can. Make it a little bit formal and lots of fun. Tip number three is no means no. And I really need to give most of the credit for this tip to my daughter, who's now the mother of some sons. And she has thought this through, and this is what I'm sharing with you today. Why is no means no so important? It's particularly important between mothers and sons. For example, if you teach your son that no means, if I push and make a fuss and become obnoxious, she'll give in and say yes, what does that teach him? It means he doesn't respect you, you don't respect yourself, and when later on he perhaps is indulging in dating behaviour and a girl says no, he thinks no means yes, 
until you know I push and then and then she'll say yes and that has huge ramifications for your boys so if you say no you need to mean it which means you've got to think before you say no because no often means I'm too tired or lazy or fed up to get off the couch and bother to do what my child has asked me to do have a think is it going to be worth the battle because once you say no you need to stick to your guns so is it something you really mean to say no about or is it something you just can't be bothered doing so think first and then once you've said the n-word no stick to your guns otherwise say yes and get off the couch and do what they want so think before you say no once you've said it stick to it tip number four is about recovery from trauma this tip is simply to encourage you if your child has a traumatic experience such as a road traffic accident or whatever uh, please try to seek professional help after a month has passed by. Most people will recover from trauma within a month, but after a month has gone by, then you may definitely need professional help for your child. A lot of parents are very reluctant to seek professional help for their children in that situation because they don't really identify as a family that has mental health needs. It's not in their vocabulary. But if you don't get the help, then those awful symptoms of anxiety and not sleeping and whatever that your child is going through won't resolve by themselves. We know that parents can help children with trauma, but after a month's gone by, really, you're better off to get the help. I see many families where the child has had the symptoms for a long time, there's been reluctance to engage, but they're so delighted and astonished when their child gets better. So this tip is, if your child is traumatized, after one month, get help sooner rather than later. Tip number five is about star charts. I assume you've probably heard about star charts, you may have used them already, but this tip is about a few things about how to use them effectively and what their purpose is. A star chart shouldn't be forever and a day solution to a problem, it should be time limited. Up to about a month is quite good because it's really about motivating your child to learn how to change to get new habits like make their bed, stop wetting the bed, uh, get ready for school, whatever your issue is with your child that you want to reward them for. But they're not going to be rewarded forever, just during the period of the star chart, and that needs to be made clear. It's really a good way for enhancing the communication with your child because it's a contract, really, verbal or otherwise. You can actually do a written contract if you like, but that's not you know, essential, but a, a clear understanding between you and the child about, if I do this for the child, mummy will reward me thus. Now the rewards for a star chart are usually star tokens or ticks on a little box on a page. These need to be delivered in a timely fashion. So that's the next bit about how to use them effectively. Don't go, oh, I'm not really feeling like putting the tick on the chart today. If you've got a time when you normally do it, do it. And it should be every day at a time that suits you. Tick or a star on the chart. And then once a week, I suggest that you deliver the actual concrete rewards, which you add, you know might work out 10 stars gives me a Mars bar or two stars a Mars bar, 10 stars I can stay up half an hour extra at night, whatever. And you have a menu of rewards and uh, have them with different values that they can earn to motivate the child and they need to be rewards that your child will be motivated by. A lot of children are motivated just by money. They get a whole menu of rewards, but they'll go, I'll have the money, thank you. That's fine. 50p for 10 stars or whatever you think is a reasonable economy to set up. So you set that up and then at the end of the training period, hopefully the behaviour has all changed, your child is happy, little boy that I've got on a star chart at the moment has stopped wetting the bed completely. We had a doubling up system, it was highly motivating. Um, and so at the end of the training period, which you've all agreed, that's it. And often children will save up all of their stars for a really big payout at the end. That's fine too, whatever they want to do. They're really the boss of the show once the show is on the road. And then after that, we use a technique called fading. What that is, you still pay attention to the desired behaviour, such as making your bed on time. And you randomly reward it, they don't know, but you might put a little smiley face on their pillow, or you might suddenly put an envelope with a little bit of money in it, every now and again during the fade out period, so they know you're still watching them. Because otherwise you can't have the program coming to a sudden abrupt end, because you know what'll happen, they'll revert to type and stop doing it. So you've got to kind of keep the pressure on a little bit, but fading, fading, until it's just second nature for them to do whatever you've trained them to do. My final tip, number six, is quite a serious one, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but it's simply this. If perchance your child is very, very depressed, and I'm talking maybe suicidal, 
or if your child happens to disclose sexual abuse. Both of these are very serious matters and they're very troubling and they can be quite traumatising for you, the parent, and therefore you might go into your shell and feel very worried and upset about the possibility of seeking help. This tip is just to encourage you in those circumstances to be proactive, to try to get some support for your concerns and to seek some professional help sooner rather than later. Believe me, the help is here, you can get help. I work with these sort of situations all the time and uh, it's, I know it's hard for people to come forward but after I've seen people they're always so grateful that the help was there. So this tip is to encourage you even when things are really, really tough to go for it.